welcome to the Esmeri Art Studio. Some time back I did some wacky birds in um, using puffer paw and I've also used some metal embossing for the wings and I have made some more feathers or a feather using some masking tape and puffer paw. So I thought why don't I just share with you how I've made the masking tape and puffer paw feather. We are going to need our masking tape. I have two different um, widths of masking tape. We are going to need some wire and these are 19 gauge galvanized wire. We're going to need a clippers or what long nose pliers to cut it, some scissors to cut the feathers eventually the masking tape we're going to need of course our power pole as well as a stirring stick for that i really like decanting my power pole when i work with it so that i don't always have to work out of the container some plastic wrap to cover it with and then when it comes to the finishing we're going to need um some satin varnish as well as some colors and these are the power colors i've got copper and dark green and this is the josephine satin varnish and then i also have the antique brilliant wax from um art alchemy i really like it it's a prima product it's oh, it smells so good and then some a variety of paint brushes this one i'm going to use to paint the um power pull on and this one will be for the coloring okay so first it's just cutting our wires if you want to do it for a specific project i would suggest um, you know measure your wires to make sure that you have a big enough feather or a long enough feather but for now I don't really know where I'm going to use this so I'm just going to make two of them and the wire is 19 gauge I think I did mention it before but I, I'm not exactly sure so from here try and make it as even or as straight as what you can we're just going to lay down our masking tape and I usually let a section go off the masking tape reason being is that we're going to use that to put it into our um, object that we are going to use or our sculpture I'm just going to do that and cut it a little bit longer and then next is we're just going to cover the opposite side as well or enclose the wire between the um, two pieces of masking tape and try to sort of fit them together that they are right on top of each other. If they're a little bit skew, it's not gonna be a big train smash. And there you go, that is the start of um, our feather. I'm going to do exactly the same with the um, thinner masking tape and then we will move on to the next step. We're going to be adding some shape to our feather and again it's you know just thinking about a standard feather. Some of them is a little bit skinnier on the one side than others. And um, oh, yeah, I think this one, I'm just going to go like that. And then also round it off at the bottom because remember, feathers does not go straight at the bottom. Okay. 
So I'm going to start with this one, but I will do exactly the same on the um, second one as well. And now it is just really going to make snip ends. I think this one is a little bit too tall for me. Too long. And all it is, is you're just going to go in and you are going to start snipping it right down to the wire and again you know yes feathers are more or less uniform but when you look at this this is art so some can be a little bit thicker than others others can be a little bit thinner but you're just gonna keep on okay so again for this side as well so now you're just going to start cutting and you're going to come right from the outside cutting towards the center wire and when you get to or here at the top Just going to shape it a little bit and then when you come look at the bottom you're going to do something similar there you might have these small little ones and then you know how there is sometimes a little bit of a gap in the feather you can actually pull that one off and then just go from there again and just keep on clipping actually what i'm going to do yeah is i think i'm going to clip a few in the opposite direction and then i'm going to come in and do it in this direction so that this is the piece that i would like to get rid of So there you go just going to cut this one as well as this one you cut um you will cut this side and i find it's always easier that when you do the second side to turn it upside down and then you would just go in and you will cut from the opposite side or from the back side or the front whichever to do so when it comes to the end i didn't really do it properly on the first one um, what you can do is those ones there cut that at a different angle and then you will get to a point where there's a piece that's out and then as well when you look at the ones in between maybe just remove one or two of them as well because they always have these little stray um, feathers that's right at the base of the yeah something like that and let's just do this one again so cut it at a different angle And pull it apart and have a couple of these in between that you remove as well. Just gives it sort of a more natural look to it. And then you can clean up there. And there you go. So almost a more natural look feather. This one only have it on the one side. So next step is we are going to prepare our power pole. As always, when you start working with power pole, you have to stir it and need to make sure that it's really well stirred up. I've used this earlier today, so I know it is fairly well 
stirred, but I'm still going to give it another stir, stir and then decant some of them into a smaller container. Just don't like keeping the power pole open. I guess I could have used a spoon for this as well. The why would one take the easy way out if there's a more difficult way to do this? I think that should be enough. Okay. And put that out the way, and I'm just going to close up my power pole. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this in here so that when I'm done painting, I can just put it in there and gonna dip my paintbrush and I'm just gonna start painting and I'm gonna try and get in between the feathers as well Again, I'm working on a splat mat because I know any drops that is falling on there, it is going to be easy to remove them. Do the opposite side as well. And here you can see it's sort of all clunked together. Oh, There's a lot of funny movement on the video. But just go in with your paintbrush and remove or separate, try and separate them. Just, you know, try and make it look as natural as what you can. But again, it is art. It just almost looks like a fern leaf now. I'm going to put my paintbrush in there and stick this in here. I'm also going to grab my hairdryer and I'm first just going to give this one a little bit of a, a dry before I'm going to move on to the next one. So when you paint with the power pole, you know, play around with your feathers. Um, when um, with the big one, I just went up and down with my brush and it really opens up a lot. As I said, it almost looks more like a fern leaf now. Um, but some feathers do look like that. This one, I just go in here and there and opening it with my brush. Well, I still have some power pole on. So this one definitely have a more natural look to it. But again, you know, it all depends how and what look you would like to have for your feather. So I think I'm going to leave this one still needs a little bit more power pole over there. So these ones won't go outside. I don't think I'm even going to seal them as they will be indoors and I'm going to add some color to them. Okay, so I'm going to dry this one as well. And once they both dry, I'm going to add some color to our feathers. Okay. So while that's drying, I'm just quickly going to close up my power ball. So these ones I just keep in these little balls and then it is ready when I use it. It takes a while, well, depending how well you are closing it, but it takes a while before it really dries out. And the nice thing is I actually save, um, when it does dry out, I save those ones. And when I work on canvases or things like that, I can actually um, use that and add to the canvas as some additional texture. So this is ones that I had with, um, that I've mixed some pyroplast in and they work very well as texture on a canvas or even if you do um, you know sculpture and you drape something and you add this as some 
texture. Yeah, so keep these kinds of things. They all come in very handy some or other time. Next step, we're going to be moving on to um, coloring our feathers. So for painting, I'm going to use the Josephine Satin Finish Varnish as well as dark green and copper and also the wax. And again, just need to stir everything we use. And with the power color, you really don't need a lot. You can also use acrylics on here. You don't necessarily have to use the satin varnish. Um, okay, I'm just gonna keep that out. You can always take more out later. Yeah, again, um, you can also color this with acrylic paint. Metallic really works well if you do do metallics with this. And a little bit of the copper color and then the dark green. I just want to do the copper with the greens for a patina look sort of. And then I'm just going to come in afterwards with the blue wax. I don't know. I'll see how that works. Okay, so when you use the coloring, it is picking up a little bit of the um, glaze or the varnish, I should say, and mix it in with that, dab some off, and you're yeah, just going to start painting. I actually could have dabbed off a little bit more, yeah. use a different brush you can use the same brush for both of them just gonna add a little bit of a uh, little bit of green and back to the copper and a little bit goes a long way when it comes to the um, power pole colors. This is not a real natural color for a leaf, um, a leaf. Um, most probably because I'm working with the green. This is not a natural color for a feather, but I'm thinking of making another one of my wacky birds and this will come in handy when I do have um, the feathers already done and it's literally just playing around to get the effect that you would like to have and again there is so many different colors that you can use with this so while this one dry I'm quickly going to not that it needs a lot of drying I'm quickly going to paint the opposite one, well, the back side, because we need to paint both sides of the feather. I'm starting with the second feather now, and absolutely, it works so much better when you just lay your feather down. And you start from the center, and you work your way out to the outside. It goes way faster. And then again, it's, you know, when you pick up the green, it's like almost you have a little bit more control. Oops, that was a little bit too much. And that was because I didn't damp it. Yep, it's important to dab, 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 dab. So I will make the mistakes that you don't need to do them. How's that? Works for me.
and then come in with the green and again still laying flat picking up of some of the green pigment dab 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 and then just add here and there a splash of the green or you know the colors that you would like to use didn't really pick up any there there you go that's way better so I'm quickly going to do the opposite side. So the last touch is going to be the wax. And just to add a little bit of blue in there. I think I'm going to stick more or less down the center of this. That's way too much. Because again... With these waxes, a little bit goes a very, very, very long way. I love the smell of this wax. I sometimes think I just add it to the projects just so that I can smell it. So once you've added, you are just going to go and sort of work it in. It's very subtle, but it is also a metallic wax. And it just adds that little bit extra. Work it in. Let's see if we can pick up the colors. Either you can see, can you see? A little bit more so that you can see the colors how it is picking up in the light with the blue the copper the green and then just that hint of blue that is in there as well and you can see it oh, there's a little bit of a blob you can play around with it but yeah it it's really nice shimmering um, feathers okay so that is how you can make feathers with masking tape 19 gauge wire power pole and some power color as well as a couple of other items i think i have to make some more wacky birds now so that i can use the feathers that we have made today and i just want to say thank you so much for joining me in the studio today i hope you had as much fun as what i did always remember the world of reality has its limits the world of imagination is boundless